Let's listen to some voices here of uh, what transpired on the 9th and the 10th of August, that is the election day and the day after, uh, regarding the voter turnout and the confusion that you've witnessed in a week that appeared to be a battle of uh, solving problems, mathematical problems. I repeat, as at noon today, 6,567,869 Kenyans had turned up to vote. This equates to 30.65% of the total 22,120,458 registered voters. Right, that, that, that is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Juliana Cherera speaking about uh, um, the, it's behind you, Javas. Um, look, so she spoke about 6,567,869. If you calculate, obviously, you will not get the 30.65% that she was talking about. You'll get 29.69%. Uh, so that was a missed uh, calculation. Let's listen to another clip of another commissioner within the IBC giving an update of the voter turnout as of 4 p.m. At allowed 4 p.m., 12,000, 12 million, sorry, 12 million, 63 registered voters out of 22 million, 124,58 had cast their votes. This equates to 56.17% of voter turnout, excluding voting through the manual register. All right, so we look at the figures again, because 12,065,803, if you calculate that out of 22,120,458, it comes to 54.54, but they gave us a percentage of 56.17. So that was still during the election day. Let's listen to what they said the day after the election, this time round, by Chairman Wafule Chibukati. But from the kits that transmitted, the voter turnout is 65.4%. This figure will go higher once we compute the, the verification of the turnout in areas that did manual voting. Just for clarity, um, I was given some the figure of 64.6% water turnout represents 14,164,561 voters. 64.6% represents 14,164,561 voters. Uh, and of course, this figure will go up once we get the data of those who voted uh, manually. All right, so let's look at it again so that we get a better feel of uh, the calculations because the chairman is talking about uh, uh, the first, so th you notice there's a difference of the figures in 17 minutes, same press conference. So first spoke of 65.4%. If you are to calculate that against 22 million and the other figures, you'll get 14,466. But then he corrects it to 64.6% and then says the absolute number of the voters is 14,164. Five six one, but if you calculate that against the voters register, it comes to sixty four point zero three. Again, um, a miscalculation from the commission, and obviously this was way before uh, the manually identified voters had been tallied and put into the voter turnout. And uh, Duncan, does this mean anything? Because the commission is um, updating the country periodically as of the progress made so far. Then eventually, the day after election. They have already looked at the returns from the Kim's case and they have, to, they have realized how much the voter turnout is. Yet there's those mistakes. What does this mean and what does it do to the credibility of the process? Yeah, you know, the, the moment we look at IBC and the very, very important <coughs> and central role that it has in terms of the elections, the general elections and even by elections, they should be like Caesar's wife. They should not be like myself, who is not very good in mathematics, because it's all about numbers, you know. So when they get numbers wrong, especially from the point where 
the, the voting has already started, it already tells you there is a, pro a, a major problem because their figures are supposed to be unimpeachable. The moment you have, and you know, th that can be, like you look at uh, the deputy, the president-elect's uh, numbers, you know, it was, he was, he went uh, past the mark by a, just a percentage point, point something. So that tells you that these decimal points are so important in terms of the constitutional threshold that is there, so that it should not, there should be no room in terms <coughs> of miscalculation. Because that alone can then mean you've gotten it all wrong. And there's a reason why the framers of the Constitution were very clear that you must get 50 plus 1 percent. They were very clear, and it's very, very important. So these are some of the issues that have to be looked into. And of course, I want to believe they were relying on information, most likely from the experts, their, uh, their secretariat. So there's incompetency at that stage, but it is so bad. Like Java says, you know, we should we are being admired in terms of how we are conducting our elections. But when such start coming out, people will laugh at either we don't have calculators, we can put these things on the portal, but we don't know how to even use the calculators. You know, so it 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 can mess us up in a very big way. <coughs> Ideally, you look at it, and I want to say that if these elections are impeached or nullified, hmm. it will send a very bad message. Because okay. it is, I'm telling you, for an election to be nullified, it is not the norm. Mm. So for it to be nullified consecutively, the, for the second time, it is a very, very bad message. Because there must be lessons we've learned and there must be some acceptance in terms of how we do, because we'll now be used as examples outside there in terms of how not to do elections. Mm -hmm. and, and, and people will be brought here to, to when they are doing their masters <laughs> to, to do their <laughs> thesis on how you know elections can be manipulated. It will be so bad. And that's why I think it is not a very good thing. As much as it is good, we'll go, we'll get our lessons. Yeah. It is not proper for us to demonstrate that we don't learn and we cannot do our elections or conduct them properly. Or then that's where people will say, do we need people from outside to conduct our elections? Are we demonstrating that we are unable to do elections ourselves? Okay. That I can't trust our own Sam Gituku here, I'd rather trust someone from outside. It is not proper. So it will send a very bad message. That's why I'm saying whatever will transpire, especially after Friday, because uh, the, the respondents will have four days after today mm -hmm. to file their responses. <clears throat> we are going into a weekend, as, as much as Java says, yes, it, they'll be, you know, they, it, it will be fireworks. Mm -hmm. uh, fireworks in a way that whoever is watching it, all what we will be getting from there is how our elections were not done properly. And others will be defending how our elections were done properly. The bigger picture of it is that so long as someone is trying to come with something, believable or, or maybe uh, somehow, even if it's not 100% believable, you are impeaching your own elections and your own institution, okay. which was supposed to have conducted proper elections. Mm. There is no election that will be 100% proper. That's why I'm saying there are issues in any election which must be contemplated. And the law will accommodate that. Around 90% should be OK. But the moment you have major issues, playing out and the world will be looking at that, then the credibility that we've gotten up to that point before even the commission and starting, started being um, uh, divisive, mm -hmm. that credibility will be eroded 100%. And that's why the nature of the petition that comes matters a lot, the grounds. Okay. But more importantly, at the tail end of it, there is a loss to Kenyans, okay. looking at it from a global perspective. Java, 